welcome to this tutorial video. Today we're going to be looking over the NCAA Live Stat programs for basketball. Uh, it was created by Genius Sports and it's based off a of point and click method. It's designed to be much easier um, than the previously used before Stat Crew, which was kind of clunky to try to get through as you had to code and stuff. And this is a lot more user friendly when you look at this. Um, it's free to download, so you can use it um, any. You know, anybody can use it. Um, you wouldn't get game codes, which is something that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but it's free to download and it's used by all NCAA schools um, all the way through. It's the same thing you could see anywhere from Division One all the way down to the Division The easiest way to practice with this and really to show you how to use it is to walk through a game. So you'll start with that by putting your starters in. And I'm going to use my home school, Bridgewater College, in a game they played against Randolph-Macon. Um, back earlier this season. So usually you'll have a spotter with you and before the game, you'll have starters turned into you probably 20 to 30 minutes before. Uh, I know there's a rule in there somewhere. I can't remember exactly how much time, but all you gotta do is you gotta click who you have. So for this example, for Bridgewater, it's gonna be 32, 21, 22, five, and three. And then for Randolph-Macon, it is going to be 23, five, 22, 10, and 31. And then you gotta go down here and click save. Now you have the starters in. And now it gives you this action log here on the side. That'll tell you everything you need to know. If anything doesn't go right, um, you know, if you accidentally put something in that's not right, you can flag it or it'll flag it for you. If it's like a, a, you know, a foul all the way on the other end of the floor or a possession's not right, it'll flag it for you. Um, but yeah, so over here, if you ever have any questions or you want to see what you put in, you can look over at your action log. Um, but right now it gives you this option here. You've got your starters and they'll appear up here. And Bridgewater and Randolph making the teams here. I'll have Randolph making in black because they're wearing black jerseys. Bridgewater, their colors are usually red and crimson. Um, so I chose them as red and I went in and manually set up all these details, which you can do if you find, um, you can look at the rosters and things like that. But normally when you would set up a game, you would get a game code and you would put that in from the NCAA and it would, you would have all this stuff already put in. It would give you players, numbers, um, you know, who's eligible, everything like that. You would have all that here. You've got your benches for both teams over here. And if you need to go back and fix your starters before the game, you can go over here and do that as well. Um, but yeah, putting starters in, that's pretty simple. When the game starts, you can hit this jump ball option right here. And that'll bring up, you can select who's taking the jump ball, uh, so on and so forth. So when you get to the jump ball screen, it's pretty self-explanatory. As you see, the screen will tell you, you select who's taking the jump ball. So in this scenario for this practice game, it's going to be Bridgewater. It's 32. And for Randolph-Macon, it's going to be So 10. after you have your starter selected, you'll obviously click on um, who's taking the jump ball. So in this scenario, it's going to be 10 and 32, um, which I've already selected here. And then it's going to give it right down here. You're going to start the clock. The clock can always be controlled by just simply clicking the space bar um, when we get rolling. And I'll show you that here in a couple of minutes. Um, and, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk you through a couple of different things that happened here. I have a, a game log in front of me here that I'm going to walk through with you um, and try to point things out. Uh, how to spot fouls, made shots, missed shots, rebounds, um, you know, different turnovers, timeouts, all those different things and what they look like when you try to pull them up here. So we have our jump ball player selected. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to hit start the clock. And then it's going to ask you which team recovered the ball. And in this scenario, it's going to be Randolph-Macon. So then we're going to click on Randolph-Macon. And now the clock has started and you notice it says here, Randolph-Macon has the ball. It's going to give you the arrow, so that shows Bridgewater will take the next possession, and I'll stop the clock here by clicking the space bar just to make sure that we don't run out of time. But it gives you a couple different options when you're here. You have a timeout, which you can take, and that I'll, sh I'll show you that here in a couple of minutes. You can also sub out uh, when we get to a dead ball. Uh, you can do it kind of right now as so the clock has stopped. Um, but, yeah, so if we get rolling here, let's start our clock, and we'll roll on here. Um, let's say Randolph Macon has it and they're going to go down the floor. They're going to be shooting in this direction. So you're going to click here. I believe it was a jump shot. It's a two pointer here. 
and we're going to click made and we're going to click our player, which was number five. So it's a jump shot and you'll select that here and there is no assist. So you'll click no assist. And now Randolph Macon. And you see there. So now actually this is a good thing that I showed you this. So you can't actually do this. So Randolph Macon, I should have clicked on the other side. So I should have clicked down here. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take this and I am going to, I believe I can delete it. Yes. And I go here and click on the trash icon and that will allow me to delete the event. So now that's not there at all. So what I need to do is I need to click down here on Randolph Macon's end of the floor at the elbow, click made and the player, jump shot, no assist. And then we can start the clock back over. And if that happens in the game, what you can do is, is you can flag it. But in this scenario, that helps us stop it. So we can stop the clock and kind of go back and practice through what that looks like. So now as we start it, Bridgewater's got it. They're attacking this direction. And what we're going to do is here, we have a foul. So we're going to stop the clock at the whistle. And we're going to go underneath here. And we're going to go over to Randolph Macon. We're going to click personal foul. And we're going to select where foul is on, which it was committed by Black 5. So you'll click that. Then when you get over to your foul type, you're going to just select personal because it was not a shooting foul. So it's just a block. And now it's going to ask you who drew the foul for Bridgewater. And it was number five. So we'll say red or white five, depending on what your spotter is. So you'll click on that. And then that'll give you that. And then you'll just start the clock on the inbound. You don't have to do anything with the shot clock. Luckily, that helps you keep it uh you, know, you don't have to do that. It takes one, one thing out of your hands a little bit. And so notice here, it'll give you the fouls. Um, it'll also display bonuses when you get to that and timeouts used and so on and so forth right there in that spot. So we'll start the clock back here. And Bridgewater still got it. They're still down in this area. As it says, Bridgewater has the ball. So we're going to go here. We have a layup. So it's made, shot made, Bridgewater 21. And it was a layup. And we do not have an assist, so have no assist. And your score is tied at two. The clock is running. We're going to go down here. Randolph Macon has the ball now. They're going down. So then we'll have a jump shot here. It's going to be missed by Randolph Macon. So missed by 22. And jump shot. And the rebound. Is going to be received by white 22. So you'll click over here. And now Bridgewater has the ball headed the other way. Now at the other end, let's say we have to do the same thing down below. So Bridgewater here, you have a missed shot by Bridgewater 32. There's a layup rebounded by black 10. So you'll just click there and that gives you the defensive rebound. And you see it shows you the missed buckets there. Now we're going the other way. And Randolph Macon has it. They're going to pull up. Let's say they take a jump shot from just inside the arc. Miss. Black 10. We're going to call it a jumper from there. And then we're going to go stop the clock. Dead ball rebound. And then you're going to select which team has it. That went out of bounds. So we're going to say for this scenario, it went out of bounds off a of Bridgewater player. So we're going to click on Randolph Macon. So now we have our clock stopped. So we're going to have our first sub here. So you're going to click on sub. And now you can put in your players. So you want to put the players that are coming in. So in this scenario, we're going to have 24 black is coming in. So you have that selected down here in the white. And now I need to click on who's coming out of the game. And it's going to be 31 is coming out of the game. So you'll click there. And now it puts 24 into the game and 31 out. And you want to come down here and click save. Now, if you ever get in a situation where you have a ton of subs coming in, or a lot of times out of a timeout, what you'll like to do is you'll like to click on switch to wave sub, so that clears everybody out. And it tells you who came off the floor. In this scenario, we'll easily just be able to go right here and click who came back in. But say it's a whole wave substitution or something like that, you can easily hit switch to wave sub. And as the players come out, your spotter will be like, you know, black five, black 10, 22, 23, 31, and so on and so forth. When you're done, you want to come down here and click save. And now it gives you the players that are into the game. 
So now we're going to go back to set the ball back in play. We're going to hit start clock. It's going to be a layup off the inbound. So we're going to go layup, or a shot rather. We're going to click on Randolph Macon's in. Missed by 22. Layup. A rebound to white three. I know I have them labeled as red, but they would be in white jerseys if they're at home. And you'll have your spot. And now we're going the other way. You have a live ball. So go down here. We're going to have a layup underneath Bridgewater. So this is another thing here. So layup Bridgewater made 32. There's a layup and the assist by three. So you make sure you want to put that in. If you want to add an assist, it gives you that option right after. So now we're headed the other way. So we're going to have a jumper from here missed by black five. So you go click on jump shot. And then we have a rebound. The white 22. So Bridgewater 22 with the rebound. Now they're going to go the other way. And Bridgewater tries to work. Let's say they try to work quickly here. So we're going to go missed three point by five. It's a jumper. I'm going to go with our rebound. Uh, offensive rebound to white 21. So that'll keep us down here at this end. And then we're going to stop the clock here. You can click up here to stop it. We're just easily hit the space bar. And then you go down here. So I'm going to go down here and we're going to click on turnover. And it's going to be Bridgewater 21 who committed the turnover, which is what you'll select here. He was called for a travel, so you'll click there and then it just turns it right over Randolph Macon. Um, and then you keep going the other way. So it's pretty simple. Uh, let's go to one more thing here to show you that. Um, so we're going to start our clock here. Randolph Macon's going the opposite way. And they're going to drive in, and we're going to go here. We're going to stop our clock. And we're going to go. We marked it down here. So we're going to go personal foul on Bridgewater. It's going to be on 32. We're going to click shooting. And it was drawn by black 10. So we selected who drew it, and that's important here. We can The fast break and whatnot, that doesn't matter. We'll keep it on for this point on the foul. So now it'll ask you for the number of free throws. And make sure you have your foul committed by who's in here. And if you want to sub before the shot, you can do that here. We're going to hit next. And now you get your opportunities here. So this is what it looks like on a free throw. So you have attempt one and attempt two. So in the men's game, you're going to see it this way. So they get the first shot here. I'm going to say he makes the first shot. So that'll give you there. So now after the first shot, let's say you have a sub for Randall Pingas here. Come over here and click substitution. Ten can't come out of the game because he's a shooter. But let's say five comes out of the game and 44 comes in. So you're going to just do that there. And for Bridgewater, let's say 24 comes in and 22 takes a seat. So there you have that. And you got to come down here and click save like we did before with our subs. And it brings you back to the screen. So now you get the second attempt here. Let's say he makes it. So that makes it easy for you. It brings it right back here. So then you'll start the clock on the inbound. Which is what we'll do here. So we'll start the clock. Bridgewater working with it quick. Pull up here. Let's say made shot by five. Jumper from, and was it a fast break? So this is the option that gives you earlier that I was talking about at the bottom. We're going to say yes, because they work quickly. It'll just show up as fast break points when you get your stat print out at the end of the game or the end of the half. So we're going to click yes. And did he have an assist? We're going to say no. So no assist. And then we're working the other way for Randolph Macon. So let's say after that three, uh, their coach not very happy with what happened. They're going to advance it to here. We're going to stop the clock. Timeout. And we're going to say Randolph Macon took the timeout. And now we pick which type it was. Um, we're going to say it took a, a full timeout because we're not to the media timeout yet in Division Three. So we'll click on a 60. Then I'll ask you, is the score correct? And you want to make sure, uh, look at your, your scoreboard in-house there and make sure you have what they have. Um, and you'll click yes if it is. And that's how you go. So it's pretty simple. Everything is point and click. Um, as you see here, one thing that you can have is the technical foul option. 
um, which can obviously happen at any point in the game. And you'll click on that. And, and a technical is a lot different than any other foul in basketball, obviously. So let's say Randolph making gets a technical foul before we come back out. And you can put it on if it's just on the bench, if it's on a player that's on the bench, or if it's on the coaching staff. So if it's on the coach, you can click coach. And then there's a, a couple class technicals, um, you know, in, in college basketball. Um, the class B is not a personal or a team foul. Um, the class A, personal foul, but not a team foul. And it'll keep track of that for you. You'll just need to know which it is. Um, and the officials should let you know if they don't tell you specifically, you can see that um, they'll come up to the scorer's table and they should tell the score, the official score, which is a book that'll be kept down, um, should be on the scorer's table. I know for us, we're kind of a, a level behind where they are at the head scorer's table. I know at other schools, they're side by side to make sure they have the same score at all times. And if there's any issues and discrepancies, they can figure that out quickly. Um, but let's say here we're going to say it's a class B. Um, so it won't count as a team foul, won't count as a personal. Um, Bridgewater, we're going to say, we're going to go one free throw. Foul committed was by the coach, ran off making. We're going to go no free throws actually since it's a class B. We're just going to hit next. It should let us do that. And it does. So Bridgewater is just going to get the ball out, the, the ball out of the break like they like they wouldn't have, I guess all you can say is it's just a flip of possession because Randolph Bacon had a technical foul. But as I said, everything is kind of simple. Um, you know, up here you have your different options. If you want to close your game, you can close it and it'll save where you're at, uh, which is a very cool uh, tool with the live stat program, especially if you're just practicing. Um, you can do that as well. If you go up here and just hit close game or exit, and if you hit that, it'll take you back out. Um, you have a couple options here. You can edit the teams, edit your print settings, um, switch the sides, like say you have them going the wrong way, uh, different things like that. Um, your game information, you can you know put in your attendance, your officials' names if you have them, different things like that. Uh, reports, this is where you can look at your box score in the mid-game. Uh, you can look at you know a bunch of different stat settings if you have any of the in-venue feed or anything like that if you're working with a, a, a fancy Thing like that you can go help and then you can go over here and click on print and do it that way as well and that will bring you to your print settings which is where you can print out your different things um and it just brings up the box core and you can hit print you want to make sure you have a printer connected i don't at the moment um but you want to make sure you have your printer connected and everything like that you want to check before the game starts but that's simply the NCAA live stat program in a nutshell, it's very simple to use. It's very user friendly. Um, you know, the best way to practice is to be able to look at a game and have it pulled up on your phone or on a different monitor. And you can look at it and, you know, track the game, have somebody with you calling it out. So you know what it looks like when somebody's helping you out um, and having them call out your numbers and different things like that. So yeah, that's pretty simple. That is the NCAA Live Stats program for basketball.